Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Let Us Think Finance News. My name is Amanda. Let's jump right into it. Before we talk about finance news for the week, I want to acknowledge the passing of two civil rights leaders, uh, both John Lewis and C.T. Vivian. I am tremendously thankful for both of their legacies, and I hope that we are able to carry those on. To learn more about their stories, follow the links in the description box below. So this week, there was a cryptocurrency scam that made the headlines if you were following it. So basically what happened is someone was hacking into the Twitter accounts of notable people, whether that was Kim Kardashian, Jeff Bezos, or even this guy, our presidential hopeful, um, Joe Biden. So as you can see, the, the hacks worked something like, oh, if you send me X amount of Bitcoin, I'll give you double that amount in cash. Um, it sounds very similar to a certain type of email that I'm sure many of us have received. Uh, if you take a look here at this chart, you'll see that there was a slight reduction in Bitcoin throughout the week. However, it seems that the actual biggest hit was to Twitter because people were trying to figure out how was Twitter able to be hacked. So it seems to be that more people were paying attention to the hack than actual issues around Bitcoin. Up next, so the Federal Reserve released their beige book. So I have mentioned the beige book on this channel several times now, but for those of you who may have missed those videos, basically what the beige book is, is a periodic document that the Federal Reserve puts together. So all the Federal Reserve presidents from the 12 dif different districts will call up business leaders in their area and try to get some anecdotal evidence on what is going on in the economy. They will then document those conversations um, and come to some conclusions about what it is that we're seeing in the economy. So some of the highlights is first that em employment has risen. So no surprise there. Um, we know that a lot of people have gone back to work um, since the start of this pandemic. So some of those who were laid off have, were, were able to find other jobs or maybe be rehired at their previous place. Those who were under furlough may now be able to go back to work. Um, however, they did indicate that employment is still not back to pre-pandemic levels. Again, no surprise there. They also mentioned noticeable increases in both the retail in manufacturing sectors. I think that a lot of us are feeling a little bit more confident and we're able to go back to purchasing things. They did note again that it's not back to pre-pandemic levels, but they are seeing uh, noticeable increases. Two of the ones that they highlighted were one, outdoor gear. So all of us are trying to get out there and, you know, go biking, go hunting. Oh, hunting, I'm not sure who's going hunting. I can tell you who's not going hunting. This girl, not going hunting anywhere at all. I'm sorry if you see the light, it keeps changing. Hopefully that helps. But yes, we were able to see increases in outdoor gear, but also there were increases in women's clothing. So for those of you women out there who are purchasing clothes, thanks so much for helping to stimulate the economy. I unfortunately am not one of those women because since the start of this pandemic, I have not bought a single piece of clothing. I have spent my entire time simply wearing workout clothes and pajamas. Another thing that they mentioned though is that residential real estate seems pretty low. So for those of you who have been involved in residential real estate, you would know that summertime is typically when residential real estate sales increase. Most people don't want to sell their home and move it during the winter. And so usually the summertime is the hot time. So since this is pretty low for the year, um, hopefully there is still time left in the summer for that to pick up. Um, I know a lot of people who work in residential real estate, unfortunately, may be impacted pretty greatly for 2020 because this is really the high time of the year. And if you're missing out on your high time, that's a pretty big deal. All right, so let's take a look at the numbers. Throughout the week, we saw that each of the indices we tracked dipped pretty substantially around the beginning of the week due to renewed concerns around the pandemic. However, the indices each inched their way back up as the week progressed. We also saw that the volatility index has decreased. Um, for a while, it was hanging out there in the, in the 30s, um, but is now trending downward, ending the week in the mid-20s. As always, when we are discussing the volatility index or the VIX, we are using it as a proxy for market volatility. This is always important for those who are interested in trading options. So whether you want to buy and hold or sell options or you just want to quickly get in and out of some type of option whenever volatility increases the value of options also increases when volatility decreases the value of options also decreases i say that so often on here so i feel like i should have a shirt 
volatility up and options up. Volatility down, options down. That's a great idea. Moving on to interest rates. We saw that the treasury curve did not change much. Uh, rates continue to be low and steady. As a reminder, the 10-year treasury rate is a good indicator of where you will find mortgage interest rates. While mortgage interest rates do not equal the 10-year treasury rate, they do tend to move in the same direction. So for those of you looking to buy a house, keep your eye on the 10-year treasury rate. Once that moves up, you can expect mortgage rates to do the same. In keeping with that, I pulled the average mortgage rates for this week from Bankrate. You can take a look at those numbers here. Use these as a guideline if you're currently looking to purchase a home or refinance your current mortgage. All right, so I wanted to do a little bit of look forward into next week. This week, we're actually seeing a lot of companies who are going to be releasing earnings. So as you may or may not know, at the end of every quarter, companies will come out and release their earnings information. And around the time a company releases earnings, you'll often see lots of moves in their particular stock prices, especially if there's a surprise. All these stock analysts out there have given their estimate of what they think earnings per share are going to be for a particular company. And if that company comes in and it's way different than earnings expectation, you often see huge fluctuations in stock prices, right? So if someone comes out and says earnings per share is gonna be $2, but then earnings per share comes out and is actually $5, the stock price is probably gonna jump up pretty significantly. So if you see movement in your particular portfolio this week, it's likely that your companies have issued earnings statements. So if you take a look here, you'll see some of the companies who are releasing their earnings this week. Um, Snap, the parent company of Snapchat, will be releasing earnings along with Twitter. Um, also many car companies, so Kia, Hyundai, Tesla. Take a look at uh, some of the stocks that you're holding and see when their companies will be releasing earnings. All right, so that is it for this week's edition of Let Us Think Finance News. My name is Amanda. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Also, let me know your thoughts on what's going on in the economy down in the comment section below. Uh, what are your thoughts around this Bitcoin scam? What are you thinking about uptick in employment and retail and manufacturing? I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.